Uh, our son is adopted, and so we got started late in the process. He was about two and a half years old and when we detected he had hearing loss. And so he found his way into early intervention programs that were put on through public systems. Um, so because, of, because our son was adopted, uh, we didn't know he had hearing loss when he came to us. And so we detected the hearing loss on our own just through experiment and not knowing any better. So eventually we did get him tested and found out that he had, had severe, moderate to severe hearing loss. Uh, that caused us to put him into uh, publicly available uh, help, um, early intervention. Um, what that amounted to for us was the fact that he was in a preschool with typical preschoolers, but was getting some services in addition to that. So that's, that's kind of our, our first foray into identifying his hearing loss and the first help that we got. Well, it was only a couple months that he was in early intervention when we really started putting together that things were not progressing as they should be, or at least as we thought they should be. Um, we thought that the early intervention services should have started to make a difference sooner, and it wasn't. And so we started asking questions. And a speech therapist who had befriended us, who gave Jared some services, ended up recommending that we look into DePaul as a great place to help with people that have uh, quite a hill to climb from a hearing loss perspective. And so we went on the internet <laughs> and found the website and within about an hour or two had really decided this is the place that he must go. So I think um, it's one of those things in life where you really have to see yourself as an advocate um, I think it's easy to find yourself into a system and just kind of go along with the flow and assume that everything's going to work out. I think hearing loss is one of those things where you really have to be proactive and advocating for your child. Um, the people who were administering the early intervention services were well intended and were trying to do their best, but it wasn't actually the best for Jared. And so we really had to intervene and advocate for him to have a, uh, a better outcome. And that's what led us to DePaul. He's always been a very uh, positive and energetic little guy. Um, so, uh, you know, you just had a sense that he had a great spirit about him. But not being able to communicate in a typical way is, is a real hindrance. And when he came here, he was using some sign language because it was the only way that we knew to, to start to communicate with him at a very basic level. And that was helpful in dealing with day-to-day -day things. Uh, but obviously that was not going to be, in our opinion, the long-term solution. So once he started at DePaul and he started to pick up you know, basic vocabulary, started to develop language skills, uh, it was really amazing to see in what amounts to a very, very short period of time, relatively speaking, uh, his development to be able to speak in sentences, to be able to use grammar. His vocabulary is just exploding. His, his vocabulary that he understands is just remarkable after having amplification for a little bit more than a year and a half. So what he's hearing and understanding is tremendous. What he's able to speak and say is also is growing by leaps and bounds. I think the first time that we heard him put together like a five or six word sentence was a really amazing time because, you know, you could point to an object and he could associate, you know, verbal sounds with an object. That's one thing. But when he's gaining the mastery of a language where he can contextualize words, both subject and verb, adding color um, or other adjectives, uh, it was really when we started to realize that it was kind of all coming together. And like I said, that was not that long into the process. Uh, the DePaul School has been a tremendous blessing for our family. We have gotten, uh, obviously, the practical support of his learning um, oral and auditory skills, uh, but having resources to understand 
the challenges that we're facing, uh, resources outside of DePaul even that we could be pointed to, um, having a community of people that understand because they're going through the same thing is very heartening uh, as a family. Uh, and it feels like rather than being disconnected and on our own journey, it really feels like we're part of a larger journey that many people are going on at the same time. And that's very helpful. My wife and I really, um, when we have our moments by ourselves and we talk about the future, uh, it's very exciting because um, Jared's a really, really smart kid. And he's also a very um, energetic, uh, just an emotionally energetic kid. He's really engaged with life. And so it, it's, it's one of those things where we have no idea what, what he's going to end up doing and where he will end up someday. But we're just, we know that that the possibilities really are almost limitless. They're based on hopefully what he feels led to do with his life, but not being held back by any you know arbitrary limitations that he has. So we're really excited to see where he ends up in the future. So the DePaul School uh, for me is um, it's an amazing uh, community um, that will continue to help us help our son. And, you know, we want him, like any parent, to have every opportunity to succeed in life and to live a fulfilling life. And what DePaul is, is a, a community that provides practical knowledge, skills, information, tools, but is also a community of support. And uh, even after uh, Jared were to leave DePaul and mainstream and uh, be integrated into a typical environment. We, I, I, for one, believe that DePaul will always be a part of our life as a community that we can go back to both to benefit from the support, but also uh, now that we've had this experience to be able to help others who would come behind us to encourage them point them in the way of a future that's optimistic and open-ended and not limited by any arbitrary uh, problem that, that they may have been dealt with. Uh, one of the wonderful ways that our family is able to interact with DePaul is the fact that I was asked to serve on the board of trustees of DePaul. And uh, we all have our own gifts and skill sets and uh, as somebody who uh, has had some life experiences in, in working with organizations at different levels. Uh, I see one of the one of the things that I hope to be able to make a small dent in is is by service on the board. And uh, as a organization standalone on its own right, uh, dealing with financial and legal matters and human resource matters, um, the board of trustees uh, I think is a wonderful community within a community that really has the best interests of DePaul, its administrators and teachers, as well as the students, um, uh, really first in mind. And so it's a great pr privilege to serve on the board as we seek to make the most of what DePaul has available uh, to the students and their families. One of the things that we really appreciate is the fact that the teachers who have been helping Jared through this journey, um, they're not just there to impart knowledge or a skill. They really care about Jared and they care about us. And that comes across in every interaction we have, their accessibility, their willingness to engage us as parents, care, you know, parents that care, um, their loving ways in which they uh, help Jared learn. Um, and so I think one of the great strengths of a school like DePaul certainly is the staff and in particular the teachers who are there every day with these kids, teaching them and uh, helping them in every way that they can. So they have a big heart for the mission and not just bringing uh, their hands to work. So.